on guys the kitty g and i'm back again on egtv i hope everybody is well and doing well today on this wonderful tuesday i'm not gonna lie to you guys i am gassed i'm about to hit 9k subs if you guys could do me a favor if you haven't already subscribed to this channel hit that subscribe button help me get to 10k next i really appreciate it guys and i might do a giveaway very very soon but at the moment first hit that like button hit that subscribe button and let's get this show on the road. As you guys already know, there's been some stuff that we need to talk about. We need to talk about some transfer stories. We need to talk about certain guys possibly being linked to Arsenal, certain moves happening, yes or no. But on today's show, if you guys don't already know, what we're going to be talking about is Ainsley Maiden Niles. We're going to be talking about Velohovic. We're going to be talking about uh, Coutinho. We're going to be talking about Lacazette. We're going to be talking about Arteta and, and Bukayo Saka. We're going to be getting into Kalazanaj possibly going to Watford, maybe. But yeah, no, nowhere else to begin but Ainsley Maitland Niles. But before we do that, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and let's get the show going on the road now. Okay. <laughs> Yes, 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 people. So you already know what it is, the Kitty G on EGTV. We're back again with another video. Today, what we're going to be talking about is a lot of different transfers. We're going to be getting into Arsenal transfer news, Arsenal transfer stories, everything around Arsenal and all the possible transfers that could be going on in, in, in this upcoming window and possibly the following window also. So right now, this is just a quick little introduction. If you guys don't already know, this is, my name is Miguel. My channel is called EGTV, and we do have a member membership program. So if you want to join the membership program, you just need to click join and you can definitely get, get started in joining into our membership program. There's several, there's, there's two tiers to our membership program, the beginner and the secondary level. The secondary level allows you to have a lot more access to the channel, but yes, come on, join us. And you know what guys, have yourselves, hopefully everybody's having a great day on this wonderful Tuesday evening, right? But yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to get started with today's video. With the, after we've done, now that we've done the intro, we're going to go straight into the Ainsley Maitland Niles story, right? Because there's a lot of people out there who don't know about the Ainsley Maitland Niles story that I need to let know about this story. Ainsley Maitland Niles story is, is a pretty big deal because Ainsley Maitland Niles has been an Arsenal player for a majority of his career here. Uh, majority of, uh, his whole entire career, he's been an Arsenal player. He's not been loaned out or anything. So he in, in, until last season when he was loaned out to West Bromwich. So Ainsley made the nose. What do, we, what do you need to know about this whole story? I'll sum it up for you guys quite simply. Ainsley made the is, is linked to a move to Roma, right? And rumor has it that this move is going to happen in January. The move is going to be completed very, very soon to Roma. And he'll be going on loan to Roma. Yes, he will be going on loan to Roma. And the story is that Ainsley Maitland-Niles will be headed to Roma. He'll be going on loan. And the reason why the reason why Arsenal will be letting him go, I'm unsure. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of rumors around spewing saying, you know what, Ainsley, Ainsley and Arteta are not seeing eye to eye. This is that, but there's no guarantee that that is true, right? So this is the situation. Our, Mikel, uh, Mikel Arteta have made it clear that Ainsley Maitland-Niles will no longer feature for Arsenal and has not featured for Arsenal over the past five games. He's expected to explore a transfer to Roma, right, a on the loan market to boost their defense over there. Jose Mourinho wants to boost their defense, and he's already signed players from the Premier League in the past, such as uh, Tammy Abraham. And also Roma has cur currently has Chris Smalling in, the, in their ranks, right? So he does have other English players that he, he could get along with. Roma are looking to reinforce their, their fallback position. Jose views Ainsley Maitland-Niles as a big part of this uh, reinforcement. The 24-year-old has only had eight appearances in, 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 in Arsenal's games this season. He's not been a big part, although he did have a man-of-the-match performance against Watford earlier in the season. Also, they're saying that they're going to use him possibly as a utility piece 
right? He wanted to join Everton at the beginning of the summer, if you guys remember Ainsley Maitland-Niles, but that did not come to fruition. And also during the summer, Ainsley Maitland-Niles pleaded on social media that he wanted to leave. So it is kind of a, a, a very dicey situation already with Arsenal and Ainsley Maitland-Niles. Do I see him succeeding over at Roma? I don't know. Do I really care? I really don't. When it comes down to it, Ainsley Maitland-Niles, in my opinion, there's numerous issues that I have with Ainsley Maitland-Niles. His mentality, he does not want to play at right back. In my opinion, he wants to he he wants to play wherever he he feels he's best at. One day he's saying he's a he's a midfielder. Next day he's saying he's a winger. I don't know what he is. All I know is Ainsley Maitland-Niles. In my opinion, in my opinion, Ainsley Maitland-Niles. If, if and when he leaves, in my opinion, it's good riddance. It's not it's not a player that we're gonna miss. We're gonna get a feedback for him. I don't know exactly how much the fee is at the moment, but whatever they are saying, it, it's a loan. And then after, I'm not sure if there's an obligation to buy or if there's not an obligation to buy, but they're saying, uh, this is what they're saying. The loan will cost around 600000 including the right to buy clause of 10 euros, which means we're going to be selling him for $8.4 million. So... Ainsley Man Niles will be sold for 8.4 million. Is that too cheap? Or is that or is that or is that fine? That is the question you have to ask yourself. 8.4 million. That's how much we would be selling him for. Only 8.4 million. Yes. I know. It does not seem like much. But that is that is what the rumors that is what the rumors say. Let me show you guys. The rumors claim that Ainsley Maitland-Niles will, will be show, will be sold for a measly eight point four million after the original six hundred thousand loan fee, which is probably what he gets paid annually, right? So yeah, Jose Mourinho wants to improve his defense. He'll be coming straight into his team. Uh, he'll be joining his team on January sixth, and that is the situation with Ainsley. Just to keep you guys informed of what's going on with Ainsley. Maitland Niles. Yes, Ainsley Maitland Niles is on his move. He is on his way to Roma. It is all but confirmed at this point. And you know what? I don't think a lot of Arsenal fans are going to miss him. No offense to him, but he's just not the player that we are going to need going forward, in my opinion. I think it's a good thing that we've moved past him. I think it's a good thing that we've gone away from him. And I think it's a good thing that we're stepping forward into the right direction. I don't think he is going to be that big of a miss, in my opinion. But yeah, that's just my opinion. That's my opinion on the situation. I'd like you guys know what I think about Ainsley Maitland-Niles and everything around Ainsley Maitland-Niles. But now let's go on to the next gentleman. The next gentleman is none other than Said Kalazanac. Yes, Said Kalazanac. So Said Kalazanac has interest from Watford. Yes, Watford. Watford are interested in Said Kalazanac, and I'm not going to lie to you. The fact that Watford are interested in Said Kalazanac, I will drive him to Watford. You know, forget about driving him to Watford. We should just chuck him over the wall at, at London Coney and, and he'll land in Watford. That's 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 literally how close Watford's training ground is to Arsenal's training ground. I think at this point, we should move past him. He's not the best left back. If Chelsea need a left back now that Chilwell's gone, they can definitely come get it. Kalazanac if they want him. I personally don't think he's that good of a player. I think we definitely need to move past this gentleman. And when it comes down to it, he is not going to move the needle for it. Arsenal Football Club, he's not going to move the needle for most football clubs. Said Kalazanac going to Watford would be good business on our part. We'd actually get a sale for one of our players for once, and that would be something I would be pleased with. I want to see us do better in the sale market because we don't do that good in the sales market. We do better. We actually don't do good in, in any market right now. We, uh, when it comes to transfers, we did well this summer, but I don't know how sustainable that is. I really don't know how sustainable that is. We have to wait and see how sustainable it is, what we did this past window. Getting six players that all did well, you know what? That is very unlikely to happen. It's very unlikely to see Arsenal get six players in, in a transfer window. And, all, and for all of them to be considered decent signings, that's even more rare. So yeah, Saeed so Kalazanaj to Watford could happen. For, if I'm mistaken, it was a fee of something across the lines of, 
uh, I forget exactly how much how much they were touting the fee for, for but I'll find it right now. It was a, it was it was I think it was less than ten million. Um, so let me just check how much it was. Say Kalazanaj to Watford. Say Kalazanaj Watford. Um, they were saying how much was it? Uh, three point one million. Three point one million for Said Kalazanaj to Watford. The Telegraph were, were uh, this was a rumor on Christmas Eve from the Telegraph. So three point five million. Say Kalazanaj. What are we saying, guys? What are we saying? Right. Uh, if it's a loan or taken permanent, either way, just get him off our books. He's gone anyways at the end of the season. Uh, I bet we sell him for one point two or something. If we sell him for, uh, we'll probably sell him for half of the price. We're not even going to sell him for the full price. So yeah, that's just that's just my whole theory on the whole Said Kalazanaj thing. Um, Iga, big up Iga. Man, been busy today. Yeah, definitely been busy. Definitely been busy. Um, Ainsley Man and Niles, uh, another Arteta screw up. Ainsley Van de Beek. <laughs> like and subscribe, people. Big up cams. Yo, bro, I try to find your Twitter account. I don't know what happened to you. DM me. DM me your, your new Twitter account. Um, could we sign uh, Sterling? We, I don't. I, there's no rumor about Sterling today, my friend. There's no rumor about Sterling today. Uh, we need two midfielders. We will. We will definitely see that. Uh, semantics feels like we need four midfielders. Goat saying, "I'm back." What's up, Goat? Goat's in the house doing a thing. Good doing it. Doing his or her thing. How you doing, Goat? Um, next, we're going to talk about Thomas Thomas Pate. Yes. The next person we're going to talk about is Thomas Pate. But before we get on to Thomas Pate, if you guys know, Thomas Pate will be going to AFCON very, very, very soon. So the fact that Thomas Pate will be going to AFCON very soon, a lot of people are concerned about our midfield situation and everything going around with the midfield. If Thomas Pate will be going to Ghana, uh, uh, Ghana uh, to report to Ghana, for, for games, we're worried that we are going to be missing a big part of our midfield and that we are, our midfield being poor will now affect us negatively in the long run. I am not too concerned, though. The reason being that there is now rumors that Thomas Pate will be available for our next game. Yes, the rumor has it that Thomas Pate will be available for our next upcoming game versus Manchester City. The reason being he will be available for that game is because not only will he not only will he be leaving for Ghana uh, for for international duty very very soon, but it will be after the third of January which he will be leaving. So he will still be here for the for the up and coming. He will still be here for the up and coming games. Yes, I'm very happy to say. Thomas Pate will not be leaving just yet. He will still he will stick around for the up and coming game versus Manchester City, and then after that we'll be leaving. And you know what? It's a good thing. It's a good thing that Thomas Pate is sticking around. I'm very happy he's sticking around. I'm very I, I was I was I was not looking forward to him leaving, but it's poor planning from Arsenal. It's poor planning from Mikel Arteta and these guys. It's poor planning from all these guys who have been letting us down when it comes to uh, not preparing for, for the past couple of years. And, and if they have something lined up, they better. Because Thomas Pate being gone for AFCON could, could derail our top four hopes, could derail our top four hopes. And we, we should not let that be the reason why our top four hopes get derailed. Thomas Pate should not be the reason why our, our top four hopes get derailed. But yeah, so the news coming out of Ghana sport is that Thomas Pate will play versus Manchester City and he will be fit versus Manchester City. And that is why, that is why a lot of people are, are, are kind of optimistic going into this Man City game. I don't know about myself. I personally still question if we can do it. It is going to be tough. It's going to be a tough game. It's going to be a tough game. It is really going to be tough. To be to beat them, I'm not gonna lie to you. They are a really good team, and it's gonna be tough to beat them. If we can do it, we're, we're gonna have to see if we can do it. Uh, fuck. If we can do it, we can. We will do it. But if we can't do it, and and Thomas Pate uh, ends up going to Ghana, he's just gonna end up going a little bit later than expected. That's all it's gonna be. But yeah, 
what's gonna happen with what's gonna happen with the rest of the players? Abamian is going. You got Pepe going. You got El Neni going, and you have Thomas Pate going. So in a couple in a couple of days time, all these guys are gonna be out. And we're and we're gonna be left with scraps. That's what it is, which is unfortunate to say. We should have prepared better for this, but we didn't. And we're gonna have to pay this. We're gonna have to suffer the consequences. But to be honest, Thomas Pate for majority of the season has not been on the best form. So I'm not too concerned. But I'm hopeful that I'm hopeful that we can we can honestly do something while in his absence. Because Thomas Pate, as long I know he's very crucial, but with Shaka and Lakonga fit, hopefully we can do something. But if they are out, it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough one. It's gonna be very very tough. It's gonna be very very tough. And and I hope that I hope to God that they are still available, because if they are not available, it's gonna be a tough one. It's gonna be a tough one. But yeah, moving on to the next story but before we do that let me just get to the comment section uh people are saying pate pate is available because prem is the big money um yeah they better have plans um have heard thomas pate song <laughs> yes i have heard thomas pate song uh pate's mm, i don't know about that um Iga, do you remember when uh you said uh what at the beginning of the season, we have Shaka and Pate. We need another one at, uh, on top. Yeah, definitely. We definitely do need another midfielder on top. We cannot survive with just with just these two. Let's be honest. We can't. It's not. It's not feasible. It's not feasible to survive with just these two in our midfield. We need more. We need more. And I know that. I know we need more. But will we get more? That is the question. Will we get more? That is a question. Will we find will we find a way to get more? That is a question. But yeah. Shaka captain. A war in. We'll, we'll see. Why saw Ainsley Party's going to AFCON? Doesn't make sense. I think we're definitely getting in another midfielder if, if that's the case. But yeah, let's go to Takehiro Tamiyasu now. The thing about Takehiro Tamiyasu. I want to know what is your honest Honest opinion on Takehiro Tamiyasu. Is he good enough for Arsenal Football Club? Do you believe he is good enough for Arsenal Football Club? Because if you remember, if you remember, when we signed him, the guy on Sky Sports says he doesn't know what position he actually is. And since he's been here, he's looked really, really good. I'm not going to lie to you. Bologna did a really good job in developing him and he's a really good player and for 15.5 million he has been a really good signing for Arsenal. I think Tamiyasu is a, is a is a good player. I think he is a decent right back. Is he the right back that we're going to need when we fully have our team fully firing on all fronts? I don't know. Is he the best option for us going forward? Probably not. Is he good defensively? 100%. Is he a really good right back? 100%. Is he better than Hector Bellerin? 100%. But is he the one that's going to take us to the next level? That is the question I have to ask you. Will, Tom, will Tamiyasu end up becoming squad deft? And we will continue to buy better starters. That is what I want. I'm not saying Tamiyasu is bad. Tamiyasu is a great player. He's a warrior. He fights, puts his heart on the line every day. One of Japan's best players currently, right? On the deadline day, we got him for a good price. And he's a versatile center back slash right back. And he's played already for us. He's played very well. I love this guy. My question is, if you have an opportunity to upgrade or to push him to the bench and buy a new right back also, would you do that? You let me know because Manchester United faced the exact same issue that we had. They have a right back who's very good defensively, but attacking wise, he's not that good. So we need to have an honest uh, opinion on, on Takeo Tomiyasu. My opinion on Takeo Tomiyasu, he's a good right back. He's a good center back. He's a good squad player. Will he be a starter on a league winning side? I don't know. I don't know. 
that is the question. If we're trying to win the league in a couple of years' time, and we're, and we're trying to push into the Champions League and we're trying to get major honors, will Tamiyasu be the one to help us get that? I don't know. Would you want to go for a Libermento or a, a, another right back again, like a Lamptey or something like that, if we can get an opportunity? Let me know in the comment section right now. Is Takehiro Tomiyasu the right back that you want? Or do you want something more? Because as fans, we always want more. We always want more. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I was just pondering this. And it's generally a question that I needed to ask you guys. Generally a question. Right? But yeah, that is my Tomiyasu take. Let me see what you guys are saying in the comment section. Let me see what you guys are saying in the in the in the description below. Let me hear what you guys are saying. Because if if it's true and Tamiyasu is on his way out, we need to know what, what everyone else is thinking also. Because I I'm I, I can't be the only one thinking this. Surely I can't be the only one thinking Tamiyasu Tamiyasu is gonna have to go eventually. Or 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 at least be sat on the bench for, for a better version. Or a better right back in the future. Look, there's nothing wrong with upgrading. Even the best title winning sides upgrade. Does it, you there's, you can have squad depth. There's nothing wrong with having squad depth. It's just the issue is we don't have squad depth. If Tomiyas is injured, who's playing right back? Ben White. Chambers could play right back or Cedric, but they're not that good. Right? They're not that good. Ben. What about Ben White? Ben White really that good? You got some questions. I like that. Let's go to the comment section. Let's go to the comment section. What are we saying here? Uh, we need a better Kyle Walker overlapping right back. Listen, Kyle Walker is actually not that guy. Kyle Walker is very athletic, and he's a hit and hope right back. The type of right backs who's actually like really good at delivering balls were like Kieran Trippier. Uh, you got friggin' Trent, right? You got Cancelo, who's really good at deliveries. There are certain right backs who are really good at deliveries, and then there's certain right backs who use their athleticism to get them into positions. I don't think Kyle Walker was ever that good. Uh, Takeru Tomiyasu is a better center back than Ben Light. Wow. You definitely don't like Ben White. Agreed. Skills agrees with me. I like that. The only thing we need to improve his attacking ability, which is where Arteta gets the money to make on par to Trent and better. But we need another proper right back. You see? Um, what about Ben White? Is he really that good? Says Skills. I will tell you this. Ben White is really good. Ben White is really good. Yo, brother, there is no panel today, but big up to you for the for the for the comment. Appreciate it. Guys, do me a favor. If you guys are watching right now, share this on your socials. Let people know to come follow us because I am only 15 followers away from getting to the, the number 9k. And that means a lot to me. So I appreciate it. Iga, can you please talk about Shaka? Uh about Shaka today. Uh talk about Shaka's what? Today interview. Did he have an interview today? Did Shaka have an interview today? I did not see anything about Shaka. But what happened? Shaka had an interview. Hmm. Okay. Uh, after what happened two years ago. Interesting. Interesting. Let's see. Interesting. Let's see. Let's see what this is. Interesting. Let's see what it says. Let's see what this says quickly. After what happened two years ago, we are very far from each other. I think we are stepping closer and closer. I don't believe we will be the best friends, but I can tell people from the first day into the last day I'm here. I will do whatever I'll do everything for the football club. You know what? Shaka is honest. He knows some people don't like him. He knows some people don't agree with him. He knows some people 
will never change their opinions on him. But when Granit Xhaka spoke, speaks right now about his relationship with the Arsenal fans, I could not echo his thoughts even more than what he said himself. He's very honest. He's. I don't know how we are going to... Uh, a lot of people say just replace Xhaka, but his mentality is very good, actually. Like I, I rate Xhaka. I actually rate Shaka. I think he's a, I think he's a decent player. I think we criminally all under appreciate him. Shaka is a Shaka. This comment right here, he's a real one. Shaka is a real one. Um, Shaka boom, boom Shaka boom. Even you, you're not the biggest Shaka fan, but there you go. Um, hi, do do you think Vlahovic is a, a red herring? as in using Arsenal to vamp up his fee, I think he's Juventus bound. You know what? We're going to get into that in a bit. I'll save that. I'll save that message. We're going to get into that. You're starting UC West Ham thrash uh, Watford. You've played amazing against uh, la, 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 Liverpool. And if you watch your... Leicester, Liverpool preview. Hmm. Okay. I, I don't have time right now to get into that. I'll come back to that in a second, my friend. LOL. Um, Xhaka is a very honest guy. Our fan base don't appreciate Xhaka, what Xhaka brings. Yeah. I, I hear that. You know what? Bro, are you serious? Shaka is trash. If he was good, some fools come by him. <laughs> Do you think Arteta will make Shaka captain? I feel like it will be our captain next season because Arteta likes him. I don't think he'll make Shaka captain based on the, the relationship that he has with the fan base. I'm not going to lie to you. I think the relationship that he has with the fan base is, is what is holding him back. Uh, yo, there's one comment here from Beast World who, who's, who's bang on. He's like, I still don't rate him or like him. Disrespected the club and the fans. Adam would ever do that. Yeah, Tony Adams would never do that. 100%. Shaq is the GOAT. Here we go. But yeah, moving on to the next topic. The next topic is going to be Lucas Torreira. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Lucas Torreira situation is very interesting to me because he is a player that we have at the club that we could actually make some money off of but will we or will or will that club try to get a loan because reported that uh Florentino have said that they want Lucas Torreira and Lucas Torreira will be considering going to them but it might not it might not happen right away it might it might not happen right away it just might not the situation right now looks like Lucas Torreira will play for Fiorentina next season, but but Fiorentina want a loan deal. Arsenal want to sell. The two clubs are struggling to come to an agreement. That is what the situation is. Our, the Italian side is supposed to pay 15 million, but they're reluctant to pay the full 15 million. That is the situation right now. He will cost around 15 million pounds. They need to pay 15 million pounds to us. Reports that the Italian uh, Italians are happy to pay the 15 million pound. We just need to see the money on the table and then the deal's done. Until then, it's not done. So show us the money. Once the money's on the table, we'll be happy. I'm not gonna lie to you. Lucas Torreira is a big crybaby. I don't really rate him. I, I don't really rate Lucas Torreira. I think he's a crybaby. I think he's a he he's absolutely just not made out to for for Arsenal level because he does not want to compete for his position, and any team at a top club needs to be able to compete for their place in the team, and he just does not do that for me. So Bakayo Saka, all these other guys, they have to fight. What makes him what makes him have the right to not have to fight for his place? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Everybody has to fight for their place at Arsenal. You cannot you cannot be an Arsenal football club and think you can get you can coast. 
There's no coasting. There is no such thing as coasting at Arsenal Football Club. I'm sorry. That just does not happen at, at our club. You do not coast. You do not get to coast. So, yeah, that is that is one of the reasons why I think Lucas Torreira will definitely be sold. He's, he's somebody who likes to coast. He's somebody who, in his comfort zone, he's okay. But once he's out of his comfort zone, he doesn't like it. And you know what? He also wanted to go back to South America. Now he's happy to play in Italy. I think it's a mentality issue with him. But, yeah. Uh, stay away, stay away from that overrated Barcelona flop. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you, Detroit Rock City. Detroit Rock City. I haven't seen you here before. Shout out to you. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. We're on our road to 9K. But yeah, the Barcelona fraud, we're gonna get into him. We're gonna get into him. We're gonna get into the Barcelona fraud in a second. We're gonna get into him. Terrera is better than Ainsley Van Niles. It doesn't matter if he's better than him. Uh yeah, Coutinho is trash we know that we know Coutinho's trash um Iga, we need a proper midfielder I hear you I hear you um Kerry saying uh Florentino has wanted Vlahovic who has uh played surely take Torreira and sell Vlahovic we'll have to see I don't think they're going to use him as a make weight uh we need a proper DM bro definitely um ESR is holding bench right now doesn't uh, doesn't want to leave. Uh, hell no. Nah. Competition makes a player better. I 100% agree. 100% agree. So close. I agree. Torreira has the wrong attitude. Um, wh who would you sign, Iga? In the midfield? In summer? Or now? Okay. There's, there's easy options. The Frank Kessies, the Renato Sanchez's are easy options. I don't want those guys. I want Frankie Dion. We get Champions League football. We we go drop 60 million on Frankie Dion. 60 million, 70 million. Go to Barcelona. Give it to us. Give it to us. We make that ass clap. We'll go to Barcelona. We make the ass clap. Drop drop money on them. Make it rain on them. That's that's what we need to do. But realistically, I don't think we're ever gonna get Frankie Dion. So if we're not going to get Frankie Dion, what I, what I would say is we go and get uh, Calvin Phillips. We go, to, we go to Leeds and we drop maybe 40, 50 and get Calvin Phillips. That would, be, that, would be, that would be the best way to go. I rate Calvin Phillips. I rate Calvin Phillips very, very highly. I would get Calvin Phillips or, or Frankie Dion. Those, those are the kind of guys I want. This Declan Rice shit, keep, it, keep him away from me. Keep Declan Rice away from me. But yeah, moving on to the next topic. The next topic is Bakayo Saka. Bakayo! Saka! Okay, let's talk about Bakayo Saka. Arteta heaping praise on Bakayo Saka, saying Bakayo Saka has improved dramatically. And he's saying how he's improved his finishing, how he's been astonished, how good Bakayo Saka has been playing. He's praising Bakayo Saka in his recent interview, saying he's only 20 years old. And for a 20-year-old to get that amount of goals that he's gotten at Arsenal, very impressive. Only Anelka has been younger to score as many goals as him in the Premier League. So shout out to Bakayo Saka doing his damn thing. Doing his damn thing. Shout out to Bakayo Saka. I'm not gonna lie to you. I think Bakayo Saka is developing very well. Uh, we don't need Coutinho. Uh, he will. He will become another William. Maybe Greenwood though. I agree. I'll definitely take Greenwood. But yeah, Arteta is bigging up Bakayo Saka. Not really much to be spoken about here on the Bakayo Saka thing. But yeah, shout out to Bakayo Saka doing his thing, continuing to do his thing, and being a big part of that attack, similar to the rest of the team. Um, moving on to the next story. The next story is not that big. It's not that big of a story. Uh, we already know a lot about this whole situation. Rumors have it that lack. Oh, sorry about that. Rumors have it that Lacazette. Yes, Lacazette has has another situation where he continues to be linked to uh, to Arsenal for a contract. Yes, Lacazette continues to be linked to Arsenal for a contract. He continues to be linked to Arsenal. For a new contract, I don't think he'll get a contract. I think he will still end up getting sold to Juventus or wherever it is. But but, uh, but Lacazette, this is his last dance. 
this is Lacazette's last dance. This is Lacazette's, this is the end of the road for Lacazette. He will be leaving the club. Long story short, he will be leaving Arsenal Football Club at the end of the year. Uh, we, where he will be going, uh, where he'll be going, I don't know. Where he'll be going, I don't really care. What he'll be doing, I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that Bakayo Saka and all these other guys are carrying Arsenal at this moment. And Lacazette is coming in and he's showing leadership. He's showing heart. And a lot of people might can get drawn into believing that this is what he really is like. And we might give him, we should give him a contract. No, don't get fooled. Don't get fooled. We've seen Lacazette before. We've seen, and, and when he gets a contract, he'll become another Ozu. We cannot get fooled. Uh, 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 how many times are we going to be fooled? How many times are we going to be fooled by, uh, by players before we, before we start to realize the trend and what happens? Every fucking time. We give a player a deal and then boom. Immediately after we give them the contract, they, they become shit. We can't, do, we can't keep giving people contracts when they get a purple patch. This whole stuff about giving Lacazette a contract makes no sense. He already said he wants to leave on a free. He already said he wants to leave Arsenal. He already said he's willing to leave Arsenal. He's already said he does not want to be around Arsenal. So why are we even considering considering giving him a contract? It makes no sense. It makes utter, it makes no sense at all. The most ridiculous takes from Arsenal fans saying, let's give him a contract. No. Why are we giving him a contract? Why does he deserve a contract? What has he done to, to say he deserves a contract at the age that he's at? The profile of player that he's a, that he is, I'm sorry, he's not the he's not he's not somebody who's going to be part of this rebuild. He's gone as far as possible. I think at this point we need to move past Lacazette. We need to go. We need to go for better. And please, guys, stop living in the past. Lacazette, Abamyang, they they were they, they're players that we liked. They're players that have done their job. They were serviceable at, at certain times, but now it's gotten to the point where Lacazette's got to go. And we need to stop talking about Lacazette contracts. The club needs to stop bringing up these rumors. Journalists needs to get away from this rumor. Lacazette needs Lacazette needs to leave for his own career, personally, in my opinion. And this whole thing about this whole thing, just let's be honest, guys. Let's keep it a buck. When he leaves, he is going to play well. But we need to understand he was not playing well for us. You go to new circumstances, you you might play better. Just don't expect him to be shit when he leaves. He's gonna be decent. Just don't just don't see that and be like, oh, why didn't he do this for Arsenal? He couldn't. He couldn't hack it at Arsenal. Just sometimes people don't aren't able to hack it at Arsenal. That's just the reality. We need to remember that. Okay. So yeah, let me go to your comments about the whole Lacazette thing. Let's see what you guys got to say about Lacazette. I can see some of your comments are already coming out about Lacazette. Um, yeah, Ozo was given a stupid deal when uh, then shit. Abamyang, I agree with Iga. We need to move on from Lacazette, 100%. Ozo was the same shit before his contract. Yep. Yep. Um, Lacazette has always been good, though. I think he will be out. Uh, he will be another Ozo. Uh, I think he will be. An, he will not be another Ozo. Uh, we might get another striker, and he will flop. A Bamiang story is Arteta's style of play. Interesting. 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 I like that. Um, do you do you worry, Lacazette? Abamyang, Pepe, Edin Ketia will leave at the end of the season. Pepe leaves, I'm not worried. Edin Ketia leaves, I'm not worried. Abamyang leaves, I'm not worried. Lacazette leaves, I'm not worried. You want to know why? If all four of these guys leave this summer, who benefits? Arsenal. Because Edin Ketia is underperformed. Pepe has been underperforming. Lacazette has been doing well. Abamyang has been mixed. With all of them off the books, we can now reinvest that money. That is 200K from Pepe, close to 200K for, Abam uh, for Lacazette, 300K for Abamyang, and Eddie Nketiah, maybe 50, 60, 70K. So altogether, 
that is close to 700 to 800K. 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 You know how many good, good quality players you could get with 800K in caps, in, in, in uh, wages? Bro, that would be amazing. Ego, Tottenham bottled it again. I know, bro. I know. They, they always do that. They always do that. They always do that. That's Tottenham. That's who they are. They're built like this. They bottle everything. They're literally, their shirts were made out of plastic because they bottle everything. So they started bottling their players. <laughs> Let's be honest. Lacazette has never scored 20 goals as a striker. Uh, we need a prolific striker. I agree. I agree. We do need a prolific striker. We do need a prolific striker. And we're going to try to get a prolific striker. We're going to try to get a prolific striker this summer. But before we go for that striker, we're gonna we're gonna be linked to some dumb people. We're gonna be linked to some fake news. Every year we're linked to fake news, and that doesn't change. Now let me tell you guys who the fake news this year is. We're linked to we're linked to Coutinho. Yes, Arsenal is linked to Coutinho again, again. How many times are we gonna get linked to Coutinho? Every other week we get linked to Coutinho. It's actually crazy, like. Don't you realize you're linking us to a player who none of the fan base wants? I don't think the, uh, the manager wants him. We could have signed him numerous times. We still did, we still chose not to. We constantly get linked to these guys. Don't the journalists realize that fans are sick and tired of bullshit stories? Give us reliable stories. The reason why Fabrizio Romano is respected is because he doesn't put out bullshit, right? He does not put out bullshit. But some of these guys... They constantly link us to players that Arsenal Football does not want. And I don't think Arsenal Football Club wants Philip Coutinho. We are linked to Philip Coutinho. He's been an absolute flop at Barcelona. He's been an absolute flop everywhere he's gone. He's gone on loan already. And and he and his and his loan deals haven't worked out. He went to Bayern Munich, won the Champions League. He's a Champions League winner. You know what I mean? He he won the league. He won the he won the treble. He's done everything in football. But his wages are ridiculous. Why the hell would we sign another old player? Maybe he's not even that old. Why would we sign Coutinho, though? He just doesn't fit the bill. He just doesn't fit the bill. I'm sorry. Philip Coutinho is a flop. He's overrated. And at this point, he, his career at Arsenal is pretty much done. I mean, No, I mean, his career as a top, top talent is pretty much done. His credibility has been shot. The fact that he couldn't make it at Barcelona is definitely hindering, uh, hindering his reputation. And he was a good player at Liverpool, but nah, man. I don't think anybody wants Philip Coutinho. I'm, you know what? When I see these reports, I say, this shit again? This shit again? Philip Coutinho again? Come on. Think of something original. No. I'm done out here. I'm done. I can't do this anymore. Philip Coutinho, dead story, dead topic. Keep him moving. We don't want you. We don't want Philip Coutinho. Even if he came to Arsenal, I don't think he would start. I think at this point, Odegaard, ESR, we have good options in that position. We need deep line playmakers. We need midfielders from deep. Instead of getting this guy, go get somebody else. Nah, man. Philip Coutinho is a big no-no for me. Philip Coutinho is a big no-no for me. But yeah. We keep it moving from Coutinho, right? Keep it moving from Coutinho, and and now we're on to, we're on to the final the final topic of the day, the final topic of the day. We got to talk about him. He's the guy that we need to talk about every single stream, every stream we talk about him, every single stream we talk about him. We're gonna get to Awar in a second, guys, but we need to get on to the final story of the day. The final story of the day is none other than. None other than Dusan Vlahovic. Yes, Vlahovic. That is his name. Dusan Vlahovic is linked to Tottenham. He's linked to Man City. He's linked to Arsenal. He's linked to Bayern. He's linked to Juventus. He's linked to almost every club in world football. Is it realistic that Arsenal is going to get him? If all those clubs are in for him, probably not. Probably not. Let's be real. Let's keep it real. If all those other clubs are in for him, we probably won't be able to get him. 
But what is going to happen in order for us to get him? We need to go in for him before everybody else goes in. So what do we do? We try to go in for him in January. We try to go in for Vlahovic in January. If we can go in for Vlahovic in January, his contract situation over in, in his club that he's currently playing at, his contract runs out at the end of the summer. So what that means is, if his contract is running out at the end of the summer, we have a, we have a, we have an opportunity to sign him to a pre-contract, or we have an opportunity to sign him up uh, and pay the and get him to pay the transfer fee. Right? He's 21 years old. He's one of the youngest players to ever score. Uh, the amount of goals that he scored in the Syria, right? He is, yes, he's a Syria striker and the Syria is not the strongest of leagues, but according to him, he has strong links to Juventus and Juventus may have the upper hand to Arsenal because they have been, uh, because they've been chasing him before. He's already played in their league. He's comfortable in the Syria and he, and he would stay, he, he would be going to a top, top team. In Juventus, even though they're not performing like one of the top, uh, one of the best teams, could this force the Serbian to consider Arsenal if Juventus do end up getting a situation? Because if Juventus cannot afford his wages and they cannot afford the transfer fees, maybe we can get him. Because at the moment, Man City are not being spoken about in for Vlahovic because they're in for Holland, Tottenham. They're still bottle jobs, so so no one's really considering them either. So, what are we saying? What are we saying? What are we saying? I personally think, when it comes down to it, if we can get Vlahovic, Arsenal Football Club still has the clout to get Vlahovic. Yes, we do. But will we get him? That is up to him and his personnel. He said on numerous occasions that he does not want to join Arsenal or 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 that he is considering other thoughts. If we pay more money than Juventus, if we give him uh, more assurances, everything else, it doesn't matter. If he wants to stay in Italy, he's going to stay in Italy. If Bayern Munich come for him, he's going to go to Bayern Munich. If Man City come for him, he's going to go to Man City. Barring those three clubs, if Arsenal have a free hit, then we can get him. But you know what? Our fan base don't want to talk about free hits. <laughs> but yeah, that is that is the story about Vlaovic. The contract situation we already know. He's turned down numerous contracts. His his agent has reportedly not picked up Arsenal's phone calls, which is ridiculous to be released to the public. Um yeah, they're trying to make us into a joke, but I don't think Vlaovic pursuit is over. I think Arsenal will continue to pursue Filovic and will continue to be linked to him. But at the moment, we are seeing we are there's many, many options. Dominic Cabaluan, Ivan Tony, uh, uh, Ali Watkins, um, John, Alexander Isaac, Vlahovic, you have um there's, there's Jonathan, there's Jonathan David, there is Patrick Schick. There is seven names that have been floated around with Arsenal. I don't know who we're going to get. But at the moment, I don't care. I just want to focus on this season. If we can win our games in hand, we get top four, we can get whoever we want. But if we drop off and we don't get top four, we're not going to get any of these guys that we really want. We're going to have to go for second options. And I'm sick and tired of going for second options. So focus on the league. Get us Champions League football. And you can get whoever you want. They'll end up coming. They will end up coming. But yeah, that's my story. That's what I think. Let me let me go to let me go to the comment section and see what you guys have been saying. I need to go back to that comment that I that I saved. Um hi Iga. I think Vlahovic is a red herring as in using Arsenal to vamp up his fee, I think he, uh, I think he's Juventus bound. I agree. I think he he definitely will be going to Juventus if anything, in my opinion. Um, let me just check something quickly. Let me just check something quickly. Yeah, yo guys, there's a midfielder incoming. We are defo getting a new midfielder. 
Okay, yeah. Personal terms have been agreed with Inzima and Niles. And um, okay, guys, this is this is definitely it. It's happening. It's happening. Check it out. Check it out. Shit, uh, shit's moving. Um, Roma currently uh, negotiating personal terms with Ainsley and Niles. Then they will complete the deal. Yep, it's pretty much almost done. We are defo getting a new uh, center mid. Definitely getting a new center mid. Anyways, you guys have yourselves a wonderful day, guys. I'm out of here. I got to go. I'll catch you guys on the flip side. You already know what it is. Kitty G on EGTV. Anybody watching on the playback or watching on live, appreciate you guys. Do me a favor, guys. Please share this. Let your friends know about EGTV. Get them get them subscribed. I, I am so close to 9K. Really would love to get over 9K today. But, yeah, have yourselves a wonderful day. You already know what it is. Kitty G on EGTV. And I'm out, people. Peace.